Hello, I'm Dr. William Schlosser, Washington State University School of the Environment. This is my classroom. The study of ecology considers population growth with birth rates and death rates, regulation and intraspecific and interspecific competition, mutualism, and predation. Focusing on adaptations, physiological ecology is concerned with the responses of individual organisms to temperature, moisture, light, and other environmental conditions. Closely associated with population and evolutionary ecology is community ecology, which deals with the physical and biological structure of communities and community development. To launch into inquiries, we investigate population genetics. Population ecology is evolutionary ecology that deals with the role of natural selection in physical and behavioral adaptations and speciation. The process in which one species gives rise to multiple species that exploit different features of the environment, such as food resources or habitats, is called adaptive radiation. The different features of the environment exert the selection pressures that push the population in various directions and reproductive isolation, the necessary condition for speciation to occur, is often a byproduct of the changes in morphology, behavior, or habitat preferences that are the actual targets of selection. Speciation is the evolutionary process by which populations evolve to become distinct species. Charles Darwin was the first to describe the role of natural selection in speciation in his 1859 book, The Origin of the Species. He also identified sexual selection as a likely but problematic mechanism. There are four geographic modes of speciation in nature, based on the extent to which speciating populations are isolated from one another. Allopatric, peripatric, parapatric, and sympatric. Focus on these terms, know how to define them, apply them to populations you observe, and be able to give examples of how you understand these instances. Speciation occurs when biological populations of the same species become isolated from each other to an extent that prevents or interferes with gene flow. The separated populations develop adaptive responses to their restrictive environments. Huh. We look for the examples to prove it. We are looking at racks of two five-point bull elk I harvested, and their body sizes were very similar. The bleached one on the right was left in the sun too long. It was colored like the one on the left when I shot it. The rack on the left was kept under closed storage until I mounted it. That smile in the middle is my daughter. <laughs> she is not an elk. <laughs> I harvested the Rocky Mountain elk, Cervus canadensis variety Nelsoni, shown on the right in 1991 at Bald Mountain, Selway River Drainage, uh, near the Nez Perce Trail at Bald Mountain, Idaho. The Manchurian Wapiti, Cervus canadensis variety Zakhopigus, was shot in Habarsky Krai, Russian Far East, in 1996. These are found to the east of Lake Bakal, Russia. As populations, they have common ancestry, but have been genetically separated for 14,500 years. I take you back several lectures to remember the geologic conditions confirming the current ice age we are still exiting from. Only about 21,000 years ago, the current ice age was at its crescendo. Surface waters were mostly frozen, locked in terrestrial glaciers and sea ice. This meant there was less water resting in the oceans. Sea levels stood about 120 meters, 400 feet lower than it does today. That means the Bering Straits were open fields in boreal forests, connecting these two continents. Beringia is a land in the maritime area bounded on the west by the Lena River in Russia, and on the east by the Mackenzie River in Canada, on the north by 72 degrees north latitude in the Chukchi Sea, and on the south by the tip of the Kamchatka Peninsula. This territory was an easily traversed path between these two continents. Species of all types were connected along this connection, linking current-day Alaska with the Russian Far East. The connective tissue now under the North Sea was about the size of today's country of Mexico. 
At that time, 21,000 years ago, the world was in the apex of the Ice Age, and the elk species were connected as a series of populations along this continental connection zone. Genetic materials were still shared between populations. Both six-point bulls in these photos are about the same structure and build. Genetically, these two subspecies have been separated by 8,550 kilometers, or 5,500 miles, and about 14,500 years. Restrictive environments faced by each population favored random mutations to solve similar adaptation needs. They may look similar, but the DNA of these representatives of historically related species is no longer identical. It is not similar enough to support genetically viable offspring made between mates of these two populations. Remember, viable offspring require production of offspring who can also successfully reproduce. Just because offspring are made, it does not mean that they can also reproduce. Think about mules for this hybrid situation. In this example, a geographic change separated members of the elk populations into more than one group. Such changes could include the formation of new mountain range or a new waterway, or the development of new canyons. Here we see how lush boreal forest ecosystems were flooded. It was a warming and that connected the Arctic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Different gene mutations in each subpopulation occurred and built different solutions to similar restrictive environments. The different mutations and resultant genetic variations led to different characteristics between the separated populations. Allopatric speciation has occurred. Resources are often limited in a habitat, and many species may compete to get a hold of them. Elk along this river compete for food nutrients, water, and space. They also compete for all these resources with deer, beavers, and other herbivores in the same space. We explored the concept of an ecological niche and saw how species having similar niches leads to competition. We explored how species can evolve by natural selection to occupy different niches, thus divvying up resources and minimizing direct competition.